Here's how I did it. I integrated a tool called Home Assistant and I installed Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi. I found the configuration for the Wi-Fi LED strip controller. And in my Google Home or Nest speaker, I also integrated that with the tool. So what I'm planning on doing is creating a webhook and this webhook notification will hit the Home Assistant that can be attached to a serious event notification as a secondary notification in your preferred event definition in Greylog. I'll send a webhook to the Home Assistant that triggers an automation to flash the LED lights in the room red and broadcast a DEF CON 1 audio message over the Google Home Mini. This is just an example of what you can do with some of the webhooks when you get a bit creative. Are you still that water cooler when this happens? Probably not after you see what I'm going to do here in a moment. Let's get into some configurations. Home Assistant has some great installation options. And I, again, have used the Raspberry Pi with one gig of RAM, and it's plenty for doing some of the testing that I'm doing. So I'll bring it up here on the screen. You'll see the Home Assistant has an installation mechanism here for Docker and multiple different types of Raspberry Pi, Odroid, Odroid Asus Tinkerboard, uh, standard x86 64 bit. Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, and there's some alternative VMs that you can check out for NAS appliances, which some of the NAS appliances start that automatically in the NAS. So you can run it on a minimal type configuration. Next, let's get into some configuration of the Home Assistant. So the first thing I wanna do is help you get through the configuration to make it a little bit easier in the setting, setup initially of it. You'll find some of the configurations, if you don't do certain things in order, you're gonna find yourself wanting to go back and modify your configurations to make things look better or just function a little bit easier. So the first thing I would recommend doing is out of the box when you go to settings and areas and zones, there's obviously some names here because it is home assistant. You'll see kitchen, living room, et cetera. You'll see uh, sock. I've gone in and added it. And what you'll notice is if I just minimize my screen slightly, there's a button here for create area. You create a name and a picture if you want, and you can add it to the Home Assistant. Once that's been added, what I would do next is look at what types of integrations you wanna bring in or what you've got. So under settings and devices and services, you'll notice on my screen that the home automation tool itself has gone out and grabbed some automations. Um, and some integrations with Google Cast Supervisor, which is the built-in application itself that monitors it, the controller, which I'll show you how that got added in, and mobile client. I've installed the Home Assistant on my mobile device as well so that I can actually control it from my mobile phone. But adding the controller, the Magic Home Wi-Fi controller, first thing you need to do is on your mobile phone, you do have to add the client, and you'll see on my phone I have the client on my phone. What that's for is going to the device, there's a QR code on it, and you use that with the application to add the device to your Wi-Fi network to give it an IP address on the network. Once it's on the network, you can test the LED lights, make sure everything's functioning within the app itself. You can turn them off and on, change colors, do all kinds of neat stuff. So adding this, what you do is you add an integration. So click on the blue button, and because it's a magic home, you add Magic Home. You've already got your IP address, hopefully, from when you added it to the device. And you add the host name and IP, or host name or IP. And lo and behold, it will show up here in your configuration. So once you've got that in your configuration, you now have the ability where you can start going in and defining some things and controlling the LED controller and LED lights. What I would recommend next is under Settings, you go to Automations and Scenes, and you create some scenes. Scenes are going to be different change state things that'll happen with your LED lights. Simple as turn on, turn off, or turn on, but select a color, or turn on, select a color, and a pattern. You might want to flash the light, or you might want to crossfade with multiple colors. A lot of those options available in the device. So what I've done here is, the first one I want to go over is the LED off. So once you create a new scene, you would name the scene. And what you do is assign it to a room. I called it SOC because that's where I'm going to do this. And in the bottom here, you'll see the configuration for the controller. When you click on it, you'll notice it has the ability to change the brightness and such. When you turn it in the off position and you save it, 
that basically becomes the scene. It says, turn it off, no matter what the state is. If it's flashing, if it's solid, it turns it off. So the next one I wanna go over for the scene is turning the LED red. So you'll see the same thing here. I've done the same, and you'll notice it's showing up red in the screen. So why that did is I what I collected, collected the uh, configuration and I hit the controller options when turning it on. You can select what color you want it to in the palette and save it and that will be the color. Going back to the additional scene, the last one I wanted to create was the red LED fade. And added this and created the fade effect and the attributes on that. So now I selected the same color and lo and behold, it's doing the fade. So what I'm gonna do is show you because I've assigned these three to sock on the left hand side. If I click on sock, you're gonna notice above the actual controller right now is flashing red and I'm gonna show you that. You'll see I've added the controller here and it's flashing. You can control it by clicking on the individual actions or scenes that show up. You can turn it white if you want it to be your normal state or the red fade again, or off. So in doing that, that is how you will tie your scenes to a given room and or area. So moving next, what you wanna look at is when you've added the Google Home Mini, you'll notice here, I can turn it on, you should hear this. It will sit idle until you call it to do something but you can wake it up by turning it on here in the individual room that I've assigned it to. So when you wanna play audio to a Google mini speaker or some other type of device like Alexa, which integrates as well, I'd recommend when you start building your configurations to add your media that you want right away. So under media, you click media and you'll see the local storage. The local storage, you'll see a bunch of files here. I've got the Greylog logo file, I've got DEFCON 5, DEFCON 1, and all these different audio files. These audio files are what you're gonna to add to your configurations. So next what I wanna to get to is, we've talked about scenes, we've demoed those scenes really quickly. The automations are where you can create a webhook and then activate scenes or do different things with different devices with timers and a variety of other things. So. What I'm gonna do first is look at the Red Flash DEF CON automation. So I've created a new automation. Let's edit and walk through this. So what I've done is named it. It's a single event and it's enabled. When you select the trigger type webhook, this means what's gonna happen, what's gonna start the process. In this case, the webhook will start the process to do something. You can create conditions. I'm not interested in a condition, I just wanna activate my LED light and rolling down. I'm gonna activate the scene to flash red. I wanna play media. In this case, I've browsed to my DEF CON 1 audio file. They're gonna happen at the same time, but after 10 seconds, what I wanna do is turn off my LED, my LED strip. So the audio file is only gonna play for the duration of the audio file. It will not just keep playing it over and over and over and over. You would have to add this to as additional triggers if you wanted to play it in parallel multiple times. I've just got a short file and the timer of 10 seconds, you can bump that, change that, put it whatever you want. What you can do is go back to automations and I'm gonna share my camera again. And you'll notice you can test your automations to ensure they're working. So here you'll hear and see what's gonna happen when I run this automation. Emergency alert, emergency alert. You have a DEF CON 1. DEF CON 1. Now you'll see that it's working. So I'll just turn off my camera here quickly. Next, what we're going to do is get into the gray log configuration. So take note when you're in your automation, you'll see the webhook. There is a copy function of the webhook right here. This will copy the entire URL that's required for the webhook. Once you've copied this, you can go into Greylog and under the alerts and notifications, I've created a few here, but what I'm gonna show you is I created audio LED DEF CON 1 notification. This is not tied to anything. Think of this as just a webhook that I've created in 
home automation to be triggered. So when you edit this, I'll show you, I've added a title, a description, and the entire URL I've pasted in here. And to make sure that it works, once it's been whitelisted, you've already heard what I'm transmitting, you can actually test it right from, right from within Greylog. If this does not work here, there's some other issue with the whitelist, or there could be a change in a configuration, or a highlight, which tripped me, note to self and note to everyone on the call. In Home Assistant, when you're adding configurations, they're stored in YAML configuration files. What got me to not have this work, and it got me a little frustrated initially until I realized it, as you're creating configurations under developer tools, you do need to reload the configurations when you've added certain configs. These are the configuration YAML files that are configured inside of the Home Assistant. So when you add specific things like inputs, scenes, scripts, automations, you just basically have to click on these and it'll reload the files. So what I recommend is going through these after your configurations are done on your Home Assistant before you start testing with Greylog. So moving back to Greylog, we've added this webhook and we're doing this live. So I'm gonna execute this test notification. And emergency alert, an emergency alert. You have a depth on one, depth on one. you notice it works great. It's working exactly the way I expected and turn the lights off after 10 seconds. So moving forward, what I've done is under the event definitions, we were talking about everything authentication earlier. What I wanted to show you was I created a simple alert just so you can show how it fires. And what I've done is created a failed SSH login attempt from syslog messages coming in from my Linux server. So if I edit this, I've just named it, created an aggregation based on what the search query was, what comes up in my logs. I've created fields for the username and I've created a notification. I've done two things. I have a notica notification to a Discord alert, which gives me the raw message and all of the information for the username. I've added a secondary alert called audio LED DEF CON notification, which is that one that I showed you earlier. So in this event, I am gonna fire this live and let's hope the demo gods don't end this. So what we'll do is I'm gonna create an SSH login. I'm gonna fail the login. We're gonna look at the logs and you'll see it occur. I am doing a check on this for a minute, so you'll see it occur. Okay, so now I'm gonna fire the event. So you'll see we have it built. I have our alert set up and we'll refresh that just to make sure there's none there. And the search parameters we've got based on the username we're trying to log in. So let me bring up my SSH session. Just take me a quick second here. And you'll see it'll bring this in. Username Jadar, password, I'll put in a bad password. See this generate the message in the log. There it is. Move this over to the side and I'm going to start my camera. And you'll see here under the alerts and events, the message when it fires in 30 seconds. Emergency alert, an emergency alert. You have a depth on one. Okay, on one. so there you have it. And you'll see my Discord alert with my banner. I've got Greylog listed in the example with the user with the alert. And if we just set this and refresh it, we should see an alert here as well. Let me just change the time frame. And lo and behold, my camera is off as we had selected the LED, sorry, to turn off. We'll turn that off and you'll see in Greylog we'll have this event published as well. And there it is, the alert as well inside of Greylog.